Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to do something that you guys requested, uh, and that is crawling through the entire splinter deck. Uh, for those of you who are new, check the link down below uh, for the previous video we did on the splinter deck. A uh, couple things to get out of the way first off. Sorry about the sound quality. Uh, we are literally going to be recording in a three foot tall steel box. The splinter deck is part of the system of armor protection on the top part of the armored citadel. A deck above, or the main deck, that is uh, inch and a half special treatment steel, and that is our decapping layer. So any high explosives explode when they hit that, any armor piercing will be decapped so that they will explode when they hit the next deck. The next deck, second deck, or the roof of third deck, is six inch thick class B armor plate. That will stop the decapped armor piercing shells and any fragments from the high explosives that exploded on main deck. But it's armor, it's very rigid, it's very brittle. So even though it'll stop the projectile, the force of the impact may cause spalling, which is splinters breaking off the back face of the armor, even though nothing penetrated it. So to protect against that, Broadway here, which is approximately 200 feet long, a little over that, um, is covered by a splinter deck, which is made out of 25 pound STS steel. Uh, that's about 0.62 inches, about two thirds of an inch thick. And it is much less rigid, much more flexible than the thick armor deck above it. So rather than let the splinters punch through or break pieces off the back, it is designed to bend when it's impacted and deform and take all the energy from those splinters. So um, that's what I'm gonna be crawling around between that six inch armor deck and the splinter deck below it. There's just a couple of feet there before you get down here to third deck. Normally, in service, all of these hatches would be closed and sealed off so that it's a fairly continuous uh, armored deck. And uh, it serves as a nice place for all of the cable runs for various electrical things. Uh, as a museum, and prior to that, while the ship was in the mothball fleet from 1991 to 1999, all of these spaces were opened up uh, for ventilation. It's better to have everything aired out than it is to have it sealed up as, in terms of uh, long-term preservation. So I'm not concerned about the air quality in there. It's gonna be the same air that we've got down here on the tour route. I don't believe anybody has ever crawled through these spaces since the ship was turned into a museum. And I'm not sure what we're gonna find. I'm hoping to find some good graffiti. Uh, I'm hoping to find some evidence of how the ship was constructed. Uh, it could very well have not ever been painted since it was first installed in 1942. So let's find out together. All right, so we are in our first compartment here. There's the ladder we came up. And you can see from all these cable runs that uh, we could not go directly aft, which is my plan to just go the length of Broadway. So we were able to come forward here. And uh, this gives us some interesting graffiti. The Samoan were here. Uh, American Samoa, of course, being a colony of the United States. and. Uh, a fair number of Samoans enlisted uh, in the Navy. Uh, what one was doing up here, I do not know, but he were here. See over in that space how we've got an angled uh, marking. We are over boiler number one. Be right there. So I think that's probably the uptake, uh, taking exhaust gases up to the funnel. 
look over here, you might be able to see this zigzag tread pattern. That is from a standard issue GI boot. So somebody was up here kicking around. What else? Nineteen eighty two to nineteen eighty three Hatoa were here. I wonder if that's the same guy. So we at least know that this space hasn't been painted since eighty two when the ship was recommissioned. Well, I can't go any further forward here because of all the cables. and some plumbing. Uh, can't go any further there. So the hatch is sealed. Main battery director tube and also a boundary to fire zone three. There's somebody riding a horse drawn on there. <laughs> there isn't actually anywhere I can go from here, so I'm coming back down. Alright, so we ran into a dead end on our first hatch, so let's head a little bit further aft and try again. Yeah, this one's sealed too. Interesting. Huh. Oh. There we go. What do you see? I feel air moving up here. We've got a different color primer. Okay, frame 89.
watching from home. I'm trying to slither over a wire run. Uh, which thankfully still has some of the hydrophobic material on the outside, so it's kind of slippery. So it seems like each one of these spaces is four feet wide. That's about a frame. Also seems like everything here is welded construction. Which is interesting, welding was pretty new in World War II. Looks like there's about two coats of paint. It's the yellow coat and then uh, the yellow coat I bet dates back to World War II and then there's a red coat that seems to have been applied later. You can see we've got some surface rust but no pitting. You can see that this weld bead is perfectly shiny. That means that it's uh, probably got some something in it other than steel. Weld beads are usually slightly dissimilar from their metal. But you can see that the STS steel here is welding, or is rusting, and this is not, which means this is sacrificing itself for that. See, somebody drew a swastika in here with dust. Ugh. vent leading here. We got some plumbing. This is real interesting that the plumbing comes through the overhead, which is six inch armored deck. You usually don't see plumbing penetrate that. Looks like it's uh, bronze, which probably means that it's water. Could be a deck drain, it could be something for boiler feed. Uh, look at how there's a hole cut in all this steel. Uh, intentional so that if there's any water that gets up here, it runs, it doesn't stand. Oh. wood stand. This is clearly the low spot because it's where all the paint uh, has given out to be replaced by rust. And it seems like this is as far back as we can go. And there's a handprint right there. And 
freaking boot tread. Somebody came in here and then tried to push off. Well, there's some interesting plumbing over there, so let's head in that direction and see what we got. Maybe we'll find another way through. Ah. Or this could just be a solid bulkhead. Here's a gusset plate overhead where some of the, where a seam in the armored deck has been covered. And you can see these uh, bolt heads. The six inch deck is sitting on a special treatment steel backer plate, which is what we're seeing here. And then bolted through. Some more plumbing coming through the armored deck. Interesting. So we might be getting to another uptake here. It's a little wet there, but that seems to be like an oil or a grease. Nowhere further we can go there. Look at this curve start here for the boiler uptakes. Can theoretically squeeze through there and go down the other side, but I don't like that. So let's see about going back over these wires. maintenance calling me on the radio but I can't call all the way up to them from here because of this armored deck signal will go down to where Libby is waiting for me six five nineteen forty five it's interesting June nineteen forty five this vessel was either in the Pacific or in the Puget Sound Navy Yard. I can't remember which. So somebody came up here at that point. Maybe to mess with this wiring that I'm not looking forward to climbing back over. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Glad I didn't eat too much over the Thanksgiving holiday. Ugh. Well, this just would not work. Okay. Oh. So you guys may know this. I do some caving in my free time. And this is about the most Similar thing to that I've ever run into in the world. Oh, look at that tube right there. 
might have fire control cables running through it. That would be at frame 86, 87, roughly. There's my hatch that I came up. Ugh. Here we are back in fire room number one on the port side. Forward bulkhead, aft bulkhead. I believe I crawled all the way over that bulkhead uh, and then over engine room number one. Although it could have just been this fire room here. Louie, I hit an armored bulkhead that just had no penetration. I know. I was on the other side of the bulkhead. I can show you where it goes. Okay. So we are now at uh, frame 95. Last time I climbed from approximately frame 88 to the other side of frame 95 here. Uh, seven frames, that's about 28 feet with a different manhole to pass through every four feet. So let's climb up here and see if it's any different over engine room number one than it was over fire room number one. Ugh. Okay. So during the museum era, somebody's been up here to run some wires. See all this, I think, is part of our museum era phone system. <laughs> all right. Ooh, there's a dredger hoist. Let's go see if we can access that. Ah. As you can see, this will go all the way over to probably the other side of the space. Maybe we'll crawl around on the other side later, but for now, oh, let's stay over here. Where's the, there we are. Here's a dredger hoist. You can see it's cut through the deck. Uh, and there's a hoist. See, they didn't roll back in there where it goes through. This dredger hoist is associated with one of the uh, forward port side five inch guns. Well, we've talked about them in a couple of other videos. Yeah. Very recognizable feature. Ooh. All right. Let's see if we can squeeze through that pipe. Thank you. 
finding moisture there. It's not very wet, it's mostly a rust paste. Okay, this is interesting. We got some bubbling going up here underneath of our coating. If I had to guess this was condensation. Uh, hello. There's some moisture. Ugh. New Jersey's in a really great place for preservation because uh, because she's sitting in fresh water. She's the only battleship sitting in fresh water. However, we're the furthest north of any of the museum battleships with the exception of Massachusetts, which is a couple months, uh, maybe 300 miles further north than we are. Well, the problem with being up here is the temperature fluctuates between summer and winter, and that'll cause condensation, especially in the summer when it's humid as it gets here on the East Coast. Okay. You see how it's streaking and running all the way down the bulkheads? That's how we know it's condensation and not just one of those pipes over there leaked. So let's see what the extent of it is. And later I'll come back up with a pump and without a GoPro on my head. All right, you can see these holes are doing what they're supposed to. It's running, and there's another dredger hoist. Uh, all right. Yeah, I really don't think these pipes are part of this problem. seem to extend over here, although we do a ton of condensation over there. Let's go check it out. Oh. Okay. More standing water there, but it's not completely wet. We have an uptake on the other side of that bulkhead. That would let outside air come down here. We're three decks inside of the ship right now, so it should be fairly stable unless there's a big open trunk. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna come back and explore this later. around get back out of here the other thing is that pipe is not insulated and it is a water pipe so that could be where the condensation is starting from
Okay, so here are our dredger hoists again. And we're close to home. Oh. Believe it or not, oh. I know I'm grunting like an old man. I'm only 30 years old. But let me tell you, crawling around on your knees and elbows on armor plating is not the most comfortable. And these manholes are too high for me to just crawl through and too low for me to do on my hands and knees. So you can probably see why we don't do tours up here. just crawled through uh, some of the port side spaces above uh, fire room number one, engine room number one. Now remember there's four of each fire room and engine room, so we've done approximately a quarter of the total length of Broadway. Because it is a battleship, there is a solid bulkhead between uh, e each of these bulkheads is solid, so you can crawl the entire length of an engine room or a fire room, but then when you get to the bulkhead here, it's solid, you gotta crawl back, climb down, and then find the next access point. So, functionally, we didn't do 40 feet, we did 80 feet, because we went all the way down and all the way back, because we couldn't find a way through. Now, if you guys like this video and request it, maybe we'll shoot some more where we go through some of the other um, spaces up there. I'm not sure, uh, there, there's almost certainly more graffiti to find, more features to find, um, but I've talked about a lot of what I know just based on things we saw in those first uh, couple of spaces. So comment, tell us what you liked about this, what you didn't, what do you want to see in the future. Uh, we, we do read the comments, we do answer the questions, we do uh, take uh, advice from what you guys are saying in terms of uh, what we're going to shoot in future videos. If you like what we do, remember to like, share, and subscribe because we're putting out new content a couple times a week. Also, we'd appreciate your support. The battleship does receive operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, but uh, we also receive a tremendous amount of support from viewers like you. And if you like what we do, like what the museum does, um, check the description below for a link to our GoFundMe campaign. And any donations you make there go directly back into us maintaining this channel. And we really appreciate it. We're also running a contest. We're about uh, 10,000 subscribers right now. For every thousand subscribers we have, we're going to randomly draw one of you to win a prize. Now, YouTube doesn't let us contact you directly, so if you're interested in entering this contest, send an email to the link below. Uh, also, check out this video where we describe the contest in more detail and what the prizes are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.